<clears throat> All right, well. Well, I guess we'll begin. I, I don't know if folks can hear me clearly or what. Hopefully I'll just kind of manage the audio and the video as I go along here. Um, I'm Tim, Kitchen and Craft. I don't know if you're a new subscriber or if you've been with me for a while or you just saw this on your home screen when you were in YouTube. Uh, welcome, if you're any one of those people. I'm gonna make cheese fondue tonight. It's Sunday. We, uh, we typically try to eat simple meals uh, in this house during the week and I consider Sunday sort of a, a work night because you know you gotta wake up Monday morning and, and get rolling so uh, we want to keep it uh, easy and simple and fondue is definitely one of those dishes I will say that you can't really eat it a lot because it is very rich and it's a lot of cheese and a lot of starch so um, you know we don't eat it every week but we do eat it maybe once a month and uh, we really enjoy it Personally, it's one of my favorite meals. And when I say fondue, I'm thinking traditional cheese fondue, like a Swiss fondue. That's with Gruyere cheese and Emmentaler cheese. Those are the two cheeses that I use when I make fondue. Um, and I'll go through all of the ingredients right now. Let me get the wine out of the fridge. I forgot to grab that. Hold on a sec. We have a Vouvray. Right here, okay, from the Loire Valley in France. It is a semi-dry white. You do not want to use a sweet wine when making uh, fondue. You want to use a, a dry or semi-dry wine. Very important. And uh, I'm gonna pour myself a glass too because why not? Bottles open. Um, if you're looking to make a non-alcoholic fondue. You can do that, definitely. Um, I would recommend trying to find a dry, sparkling, non-alcoholic uh, cider. Okay, That's probably the best thing you can get as a substitute for something with alcohol, like wine. Uh, you could use water as a last resort. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can do it. Uh, you could use apple juice. It tends to be a bit sweet, so if you go that route, I would consider adding a little bit of lemon juice just to add some acidity to the fondue and help offset that sweetness. It's pretty important. Let's see here. Cool. Still don't have any comments. I don't know if I'm not seeing my comments or if um, people just aren't saying hi. But if you're in, if you're watching right now, if you wouldn't mind just dropping me a comment saying hello. Hi, creative caption and video. What was that? Oh. <clears throat> so. Oh yeah, that's right. So uh, Chris can see me. What's up, Chris? How does audio sound? How does video look? Can you give me a little feedback on that before I continue? Just want to make sure I'm I'm looking good here. Hey, good day to you. Thanks for joining the, the stream here. Great, awesome. You guys will see that. I've got this thing rigged up. My buddy Chris, you'll see him in the chat there, creative caption and video. He helped me set this stream up. I've got one, two, and a third camera. So I can toggle between these guys. And the only reason I can do that is because Chris is the one that Help me set that up. So thank you, brother. I really appreciate it. Um, it's awesome. So let's see. Where was I with fondue? Um, wine, important. We talked about wine. Semi-dry or dry. Steel, uh, age in steel or in the bottle is better. Not too oaky. It tends to kind of overpower the fondue, but you can get away with it. Also... Cheeses. For my fondues, Gruyere. Okay, I keep pointing this at the <laughs> at the computer and not the camera. This is Gruyere. This is a, a twelve month Gruyere. Okay, so it's uh, it's got a little bit of a stronger flavor than say like a five month aged Gruyere. This is a Wegmans, uh, but it's it, it's actually 
if you look at the rind, it's legit Gruyere, okay? It's just packaged by Wegmans. And I use Emmentaler cheese right here. So the Gruyere's got the punch, and about three quarters of a pound is what I'm gonna use. The Emmentaler kind of cuts the strength of the Gruyere, just adds a little bit more to the fondue. Um, it's just not, it's a younger cheese, it's not quite as strong in flavor, um, but these are the two that I go with. Uh, and I do that because my mother used to cook fondue when I was little all the time She spent some time in Switzerland when she was young and the family that she lived with This is what they used for traditional Swiss fondue. So I just stick to that, but there are other options you could easily uh, Swap out some of this cheese and I've got a list here uh, that I've tried before uh, Chala Hocker is a good uh, Substitute for Gruyere same thing with Appenzeller cheese if you've heard of Appenzeller um, Comte, which is a French cheese, uh, very, very much resembles uh, an aged Gruyere. So you could swap that out for Gruyere. Emmentaler, you could, you could probably uh, swap this out with some Jarlsberg cheese. Uh, that might be a good substitute. I would encourage you to, uh, to play around with some of the combinations, see what you like, what you dislike. But uh, you can't really go wrong with the Gruyere and the Emmentaler blend. You just really can't. It's hard to beat. Also for fondue, get yourself a nice baguette, okay? Got to have something with a, a little bit of a, of a crust here, but it should be soft on the inside. And then you can mix it up and add some vegetables or maybe uh, some sliced apples. It's really good. So I'm going to do some broccoli, okay? And we'll blanch that really quick and then just throw it in the fridge and let it cool off quickly. And uh, like I said, apples, I've got some uh, sweet tango apples right here. We'll cut those up too. You're gonna need some garlic. You're gonna need some cornstarch, okay? And you're gonna need something called cherry Kirschwasser. Translation, cherry water. It's just a, a cherry flavored brandy, okay? This just uh, finishes off the, the fondue. Nice little kick to it at the end. And then um, you're gonna want some, some nutmeg as well. Let's see here. So, where should I begin? You got a fondue pot right here, okay? You need fondue forks. And um, this one's electric. You can buy ones that are, that are gas. Not gas, I'm sorry. Uh, flame, like it has a little tea light or a little uh, sterno underneath of it. But electric is easy and provides even heat along the bottom of the, uh, the fondue pot. Mine's a little busted up. I dropped it from the cabinet, <laughs> so it's a fire hazard now. Anyway, it still works though, so I just have to be careful and, and line it all up and, and it plugs in just nice like that. Give it a quick test. Yep, we're good. All right. First step is what you're gonna wanna do here is you're gonna wanna grate this cheese. And I just using a simple box grater, okay? get my OBS out because there's a delay with YouTube so I see what I did 10 seconds ago and you guys it looks like it's real time but it's not there's a delay so I'm gonna take this uh, this Gruyere and mind you when you get Gruyere when you, you when you buy in the store or you buy a lot of cheeses you're gonna get a rind on it okay and uh, when you look at the weight of the cheese <laughs> Understand that you're not going to want to eat the rind on a lot of the cheeses, especially hard cheeses. The rind is not really edible. So you got to take that into consideration when you're, when you're buying your cheese. These two blocks of Gruyere add up to about um, 0.85 pounds. Okay. When I cut them up, when I cut the rind off, it should be about three quarters of a pound, which is what I want for this, this recipe. Okay. We're going to go with a pound of cheese total. So three quarters of a pound of Gruyere, and then this Emmentaler right here is about 0.43. Um, there's a little bit of a rind right here, so I'm just gonna kinda cut it off center a little bit, and that should give me 0.25. Go. If you all have any questions, fire away. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, it could be about this recipe. It could be about my channel. It could be about me, um, you know, Ask away in the chat, and I'll do my best to answer. We'll go from there. How about that? 
What I plan on doing here in the future is streaming more. Uh, if you're a subscriber to my channel, you may have noticed that I haven't posted a video in probably a little over a month. And it really just has to do with my family activities and my workflow and uh, my normal nine to five. And if it's, you know, if things are busy uh, and, and I can't quite get to a video, that just gets pushed to the back burner because uh, as much as I'd like to be able to have time to do it and post videos every week, it just doesn't happen. And I have other priorities that I have to, you know, that I want to be uh, uh, managing. So it's live streaming might give me an opportunity to spend more time with you guys and put more content out there. Um, so at least once a week is what I plan to do for live streaming with this setup. And uh, if I can do that, I'd be very happy. And hopefully you guys will find that the live streams are are kind of filling that void when I can't get uh, edited videos up. All right, I'm gonna grate some cheese. And you can just use the coarse side. And if you have Cuisinart or some sort of KitchenAid uh, food processor, you could use that too. But there's not a lot of cheese to grate here, so a box grater does a trick for about a pound or so. like there's uh, you know 15 20 people watching if you've got questions or you just want to say hi or whatever love to see some ex activity in that chat It'd be great <clears throat> if you've seen my channel and you've looked at some of vid my videos we're like what are your what are some of your more favorite videos from my channel is it the pizza stuff or is it the pasta or one of the dessert videos, a couple of my dessert videos have done very well. Let's see, we'll pop over to this one. You can kind of see what I'm in here. I'm gonna tell you, I like the the switcher. Having three cameras going is pretty sweet. While I'm grating this cheese, I've got water boiling on the stove, and that's going to be for blanching the broccoli. There we go. Okay, that's all the gruyere. Okay. So, get that in the bowl. What we got here? The bench scrapers really come in handy, i tell you. I have, um, I've got two metal ones and I've got a few plastic ones and they're always within an arm's reach while I'm cooking. <laughs> because for things just like this, just scooping up ingredients and getting them into a bowl. Okay, there's Gruyere. And then I said I was gonna cut the rind off, all right? Breads. Psalm 12. Breads, you said breads, is that a question? What type of breads could you use for fondue? Is that something you're asking? Let's see, so this was 0.43, half will be, cut that off. Yeah, so just slightly off center. That's about 0.25. You know what? Let's see if I was right. Let's see if I was right. How close am I? Ah, uh, way off. Wait, no, no. Actually, what am I thinking? Yeah, I'm 0.2 off. 0.2 ounces off. Nice. Right. <laughs> I talked a little bit about breads earlier uh, with fondue. Uh, using, you're not going to want to use like a, uh, like a country white bread or something like that. It's dense and it's really, really soft. You're gonna to wanna to use a bread that's got a little bit of a crust to it, like a decent baguette, okay? But it's kind of soft in the center, um, like a drier bread, not something that's super wet and super dense. Um, my son, <laughs> he likes Italian bread. So I have a, um, here, I've got this. It's like a, like a rustic Italian loaf right here. And it's, it's not too dense. There's a, it, you know, it, you can still cut it into pieces and, 
and he can put it on a, a, a skewer, one of these guys here, and it doesn't fall apart or, um, you know, it doesn't have a, a weird off texture when you're eating the fondue. So. Yes, and you can teach us how to make a basic bread or a challah bread. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, I can do that. I will be honest with you, I'm not, when it comes to breads, I'm not the best baker. I, I can do a decent ciabatta bread and a really good focaccia bread. I know that. Um, what I should do <laughs> is I should try to make a challa, and if I succeed or come remotely close, then I can shoot a video. But at the moment, I don't, I've never baked a challa. Uh, a basic white bread, I could do that. So maybe this winter at some point, this you know, November, December, I can put something like that together for you. Let's see. Any other questions, comments, concerns? So I'm just going to mix the, the, che the shredded cheese up like this, okay? And then we need cornstarch, okay? This is going to help keep everything together and sort of homogenous when the, when the fondue is made. It also is sort of an anti-caking agent too, so it plays a double role here. And you want, mm, for a pound, maybe a couple teaspoons or a tablespoon of cornstarch. Let's see how that looks. Eh, tablespoon. Do a tablespoon. Loose tablespoon. Doesn't have to be exact. And then just toss the shredded cheese with the cornstarch, kind of get it all mixed together. So it's coating all of the shredded cheese, okay? Perfect. Okay, put that aside. Clean up my mess a little bit. Keep a tidy workstation, huh? Sip of wine. There we go. Water's boiling, so I need to cut this broccoli up. And I'm just gonna cut florets. Now I have um, baby broccoli in the fridge, and that could work too, because you know with baby broccoli you have a, a longer stem, and you could use that stem to sort of dip the broccoli into the cheese if you wanted to. But broccoli like this is a lot easier to skewer. One of these guys, so we're going to do this tonight, and I'm going to try to keep these guys on the smaller side of florets. Like that. Let's see. That's what I'm looking at. So, here you go. They're all relatively about the same size. Now I'm going to go over to the stove. Salt my water. I'm going to throw about a tablespoon plus a teaspoon or two in here. That's good. And then Broccoli goes in, and the broccoli really only needs to go in for maybe a minute. We're just blanching it, so we're not gonna cook it through. <sighs> Throw this, we should have a compost. We haven't started composting yet, maybe we should do that. Questions, anybody? I keep asking because I just don't see a lot, a lot of activity in the chat, and I'd love to talk to you guys, so. I mentioned earlier about uh, options if you didn't want uh, to use one, if you wanted to go with a non-alcoholic fondue. And that's cool, that's cool, you can do that. The best substitute for wine would be a dry, sparkling, non-alcoholic cider. You could also use apple juice, but that tends to be pretty sweet, so you might want to add a little bit of lemon juice as well, just to kind of offset the sweetness of the apple juice. Um, and if you're really desperate, you got nothing on hand, but you got your cheese, you could do something like water, uh, but definitely add uh, some lemon juice to that as well, just to give it a little bit of flavor, a little bit of acidity, okay? Uh, but wine is, is really the way to go, uh, semi-dry, dry, 
preferably uh, lightly oaked or unoaked white wine is, in my opinion, better. But, um, you know, if you got a good Chardonnay and you want to use it, go for it. I would not use a bottle of wine that you only cook with. <laughs> That's the adage, right? You buy a bottle of wine that you will drink and then cook with that. It doesn't need to be very expensive, but it needs to be something that tastes decent, okay? Something that tastes good. Go on the palate. Okay. Go over here. Look at these guys. Yeah, we're good. It's been a little over a minute. I'm just going to put the broccoli on a sheet pan. It's a little quarter sheet pan here. It's always nice to have one of these in the house because they fit in just about any refrigerator. Half sheet pans, not so much, but quarter sheet pans, absolutely. So. There you go. I'm going to pop this in the fridge. And it'll cool off relatively fast. If you really wanted to go the extra mile, you could, you could definitely like, um, you know, get an ice bath going and then shock the broccoli in an ice bath. But uh, that's just something I don't want to deal with. It's another bowl to clean. So, um, yeah, we're just going to do the fridge, fridge method for tonight. So I've got the broccoli chilling. I've got my cheese shredded. I'm gonna slice up some apple, but I'm gonna wait on that for a second. Take this garlic clove, okay? One peeled garlic clove. I'm gonna rub the inside of your fondue pot, my fondue pot, with it. Like this. And I'm gonna do a few other things too, just to add additional flavor to the fondue. These other items are optional. You don't need to do it, okay? They're just optional. And I have those items on hand, so I'm gonna use them. There, that's good. I've got lemon. I'm not gonna use lemon juice though, okay? I'm just gonna use a little bit of rind. And I'm gonna remove it before I add the cheese, okay? Just a little bit of rind, like that. Just a little piece. Then, hold on one second, I'm gonna get my herbs. I've got some, some fresh herbs here, somewhere in my fridge. I put them somewhere. Where did I put them? Oh no. Now you can be as prepared as you wanna to be to go live, but you always forget a few things. Everyone does. I guess, you know, it's in the moment. It's real, so I've got some fresh thyme. I'm gonna use a spray of that. And just a little bit of rosemary, okay? You may think that I have some, I should probably have some large, a large herb garden outside. And we try, but our yard is, uh, it doesn't have much sun, so it's really hard to, to grow anything in our yard that, that needs sun. <clears throat> Okay. Next up, we're going to do the wine, okay? And I want somewhere between three quarters of a cup and a cup. So six to eight fluid ounces. I'm going to start with six, and I can add a little bit more if I need it when I'm making the fondue. There we go. I'm def I think I'm going to need a little bit more, but we'll, we'll wait. You can always put more in, you can't take the wine out. Think about it that way. <clears throat> okay, plug this guy in. Come on, there we go. Again, <laughs> I don't know if you can see this, but I have a busted, uh, the electrical part of this fondue pot's pretty busted. But it still works, and I'm using it for now. With this particular pot, you don't need to crank it all the way up. All we wanna do at this point, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the wine hot. Hot enough to steep the herbs and the lemon rind and those garlic cloves that I just kinda of threw in there. Um, and I'm gonna let that sit hot and extract some of the flavor from those herbs and that lemon and the garlic 
into the wine and add it to the fondue. And before I add the cheese, we'll just take everything out so that they're not lurking in the cheese fondue when we're trying to scoop that cheese up with bread and, and our other items, okay? <clears throat> I added a cup, or three quarters of a cup. I might as well pour a little more into my glass, right? Now, here, we we'll go to this can. Pretty quickly, you're gonna to start to see bubbles. Y'all see that? Okay. We don't want the wine to boil, per se, just trying to get it hot enough to steep the ingredients in here. This is Teflon, so I've got to be careful not to use, scrape the Teflon and damage it with this fondue fork. Here we go. Sai, what's up, man? You have been around for a while. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, good to see you. Does the alcohol cook out if you're feeding this to kids? Well, yes. Whoopsie. I'm not paying attention and I'm letting it simmer. Got to cut it off now. Um, I'm going to say... To a, to a degree, there's still a little bit of alcohol in here. And if you're finishing the fondue with kirsch, like I do, yes, there's a teeny bit of alcohol in here. But when you think about how much food is served, you know, what you're, what you're, how many people you're feeding out of this bowl, the alcohol per person isn't much. But if, you, if that's a concern to you, uh, definitely, uh, you can definitely forego the wine again and use something like a dry non-alcoholic non cider and just uh, you know, don't add the kirsch at the end, okay? But yeah, I would say that there is still some alcohol left in this. I, I suppose you could boil the wine you know, uh, for a while, simmer it, and try to cook as much of it out as you can. I still think there's some that lingers though. Any videos on making tiramisu? I don't have a video on making tiramisu, but that is a great idea. So um, thank you for that idea. <laughs> I think I'm gonna take you up on that. Um, there is a restaurant that used to be in town called Mama Zoo. If you're from Richmond, uh, it was a landmark for a long time, and they closed during the pandemic, unfortunately. But their tiramisu, I swear to God, it was like the best in town. But it was so boozy. Um, I mean, it, it like hit you in the face as soon as you took a bite, but in a good way. You know, it wasn't like overwhelming. It was just some whoever made it definitely added quite quite a bit of booze to it, and it was um, I think probably was a Grand Marnier that you add to to tiramisu. I think that's what it is. Um, they use a lot. So let's see. Steve's cooking. Steve, what's going on, man? Thanks for joining the uh, the live stream. I appreciate it. I'm doing well. I'm doing really well. Um, just trying the streaming thing, you know. I did it a while back and, and getting back into it now. So I hope you're doing good. How are you? Tell me what you've been up to. So as this stuff steep, steeps here, and we're gonna just let this mingle for a little while, we'll put it off to the side, and I cut apples. That's why I waited, because I want something to do while, while these ingredients just steep, okay? And um, if you don't have a wooden countertop, you might want to use a cutting board, but we're going on like seven years with these counters, and um, they're already dinged up, so I'm just cutting right on them. <laughs> Let's see. And I just realized I never switched back to the first camera. <laughs> uh, this is one thing I have to get used to is toggling around um, with the three cameras that I have going. But pretty cool feature if I can learn to use it right. So what I'm going to do, grab a bowl. Because you know when you, when you cut apple, okay? You cut apple, I need a long knife. Um, if you let it sit, it, get brown, it gets brown, right? It oxidizes. So I'm going to add a little bit of lemon to this apple so that it doesn't do that because my ingredient, all my stuff, my, uh, my apple, my broccoli, my bread is just going to be sitting there and we're going to be nibbling on it. And um, by the time we're halfway through our meal, the apple will be brown, guaranteed. You're at, oh, your channel got hacked? Oh my God. What did, did, they, did anything happen? Like, did they delete videos or something? That's terrible, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> I 
I remember some of those live streams that you did, Steve, um, you know, like kind of a couple of years ago, sort of in the middle of the pandemic, uh, some of those, you know, just kind of sitting in front of the, the, uh, the computer with the microphone on, just chatting to your subscribers. I thought that was, thought that was pretty cool. <clears throat> Two apples should do. And uh, if they don't get eaten tonight, there's lemon juice on them. So hopefully they won't brown too much by tomorrow morning. We'll see. Put them in the fridge. They put all my videos on private. Didn't delete them. <laughs> my God. Wow. Like, why would somebody hack a YouTube channel? I feel like... I feel like that's pointless, honestly. Just to, They're just being jerks. There's, I don't see a, a reason to do that other than just being a pain in the butt. go. All right. So in order to not get seeds, I'll just cut an edge. I've got one little, little one. And here, there. And then give the apples a toss, get that uh, the juice sort of all over them like that. Perfect. Mm. That's a good apple. And I should know if you're using carbon steel knives, you probably already know this, but keep them nice and dry or they'll rust. I mean, a little bit's okay because it starts to form a patina, but you really gotta keep carbon steel nice and dry away from the moisture. Okay, time to clean up. And now we can go back to making the fondue. I'm starting to get really hungry. All right. Put on one of the crypt Steve, a crypto scam? What did did you, were you buying crypto or were you trying to get in, invested into crypto and they, they got some of your personal information and, and hacked your YouTube? Is that what happened or? I mean, I mean I'm into crypto and um, yeah, it's a, it, you gotta be real careful in that, um, in that space. <laughs> you really do. Um, all right, so. Let's, got containers for my apples my broccoli. Okay. Just there. Perfect. Plenty of apple and there's some extra. Mm, yum. Now I'm gonna move the camera real quick, hold on. Perfect. All right, that, let's get the broccoli. Cool. You can see that uh, even though we didn't shock the broccoli, just by throwing it in the fridge, see, I don't know, it's gonna be out of focus probably. Just by throwing this in the fridge, it still stays nice and green, okay? No, it's a common thing now for hackers. Lots of channels are getting hacked. Then they advertise, cr oh, okay, all right. I wasn't sure what you were alluding to. Um, damn, that sucks. Crypto industry through a live stream. And I'm sure the actual crypto that they're shilling is a hack or a scam as well. Probably, right? That'd be my guess. I got, I got into crypto way back in, I don't know, probably 2022, 2016, 2017, I think. Somewhere in there. Still got a giant, giant bag of crypto too. Just holding on to it. Okay. 
So we have our broccoli, and we have our apples. All right. Get those out of the way. All right, next. <laughs> you guys just got a good pick on my bald head. Now, now this is going to have to be in the way. Let's bring this back up to temp. Just get it just to, just below simmering, okay? Not boiling, not simmering, just below. And when that comes up to temp, I'll start adding my cheese. And I'm gonna use a spoon, preferably a wooden spoon because this is Teflon, okay? I don't wanna screw that up. And I heard buy gold because everything's going to crash. Well, there's definitely been some rumors or some, uh, some speculation that we're, we're, we're going to be hitting a, a big recession coming. But who knows what will happen, right? You just never know what direction things are going to go. Never know. Stay optimistic. All right. So we're up to temp. Let's... Uh, let's pull... Uh, Pull all this stuff out. Come on. See, I am. There we go. I'm going to add some cheese. Like that. I missed a question. What is steeping in the wine? Had to take a call. Ah, I gotcha. Okay. Um, well, essentially, when you bring a liquid up to temp and then you drop flavorful items into that liquid, like herbs or, or lemon rind or garlic, the liquid's gonna pull some of the flavor out of those items by if you just let those ingredients rest in that warm liquid, okay? You can actually, what's even cooler is if you did sort of like a, um, uh, if you did it in the fridge overnight, <laughs> that would be pretty cool because then you wouldn't get some of the stronger off flavors from those ingredients that you're trying to extract flavors from. But um, just uh, steeping these ingredients in the wine now, just pull some of the flavor out and then add some elements of flavor in the dish and these little nuanced flavors like the, from the thyme and the, and the rosemary and whatnot. That makes sense? <laughs> he woke up to Elon Musk. Yeah, was he shilling Dogecoin? Is that what he's doing? Yeah, well, hey, fondue is uh, is one of those dishes that's uh, it's old school, man. It's what it got popular in the in the seventies. That's when uh, I know that's when my mother was was eating fondue, and then when I was born, I was born in seventy six. So, um, you know, as a little baby, she would not a baby, but when I was old enough to eat it, this is what uh, is one of the meals that I had. It was always delicious. Love it. It just brings back a lot of good, great childhood memories, too. It's delicious, but it invokes those earlier memories from my life, which were all very positive. Um, let's see. Did I miss any other questions? Nope. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm just keeping the heat low. I don't want the cheese and, and, and the wine and everything to like boil vigorously. I'm just kind of toggling this heat back and forth. And I'm adding cheese just a handful at a time. And as it melts, I'll add another handful. And I just keep going until all the cheese has been added. Yeah, this is looking great. It does look a little thick, though. So I know I'm going to have to add a teeny bit of wine. We'll, we'll add the kirsch first and see what the consistency is like after that. down a teeny bit. Last little bit of cheese. And while that's melting, I'm going to do double time. And I forgot to do this. Get some of this bread. I'm cutting this bread, uh, I don't know, what is that, three quarters of an inch or so? 
kind of thick. Good baguette, by the way. Sometimes you get a baguette that's so dry and it's got such a crust that when you, you know, like when you when you cut into it, it almost just like falls apart. <laughs> that's not great. You want to have a little bit of chew, a little bit of crunch, and definitely in the center here, you want it to be nice and, and soft. So, do this. Go back to this. I love this uh, this camera here. Tell you what, I just moved that other camera, so now you got another view. And again, wooden countertops. I do not feel bad cutting on them now. They're old. Don't do this if you have granite or Corian or for my yard or whatever. Probably a bad idea. That, give this a stir. Yeah, this is looking great. Do I like fondue with steak? I haven't had it with steak. Steve, I haven't, I have not tried it with steak before. That's a good idea. Now, are you talking about like a, like a hot oil fondue with beef? Cause I've done that. But are you talking about like cooking steak and then having fondue as a side with steak or adding like actually dipping cooked pieces of steak into cheese? Which one is it? Because I used to have, uh, we, we would have the hot oil going and we would buy, uh, I can't remember what my mother would buy. It was probably something tender like, ten, you know, like filet or tenderloin or something like that. But, uh, you know, we'd dip that and let it sit in the oil and cook. And then we'd have a few different sauces in front of us that we could dip the steak into. And that was something that we did occasionally, but we did cheese fondue a lot more frequently. Steak chunks dipped in cheese. Yeah, no, I haven't tried that. I will have to give that a go though. Sounds pretty tasty. What, what cut do you recommend? You're talking like tenderloin or something like a strip or ribeye or you know, tri-tip or something like that? What are your thoughts on that, Steve? I have one more piece. So this should be plenty of bread for us. And this little piece, eh, maybe I'll use that for a hoagie tomorrow. Now. Couple things left to do. I'm gonna add this Kirschwasser here. Okay, probably about a tablespoon, just like that. Not too much. It's pretty powerful stuff. See how creamy this is. See how like it's so homogenous. It's not broken. It's, it's, the texture looks great. Came out great. Occasionally I'll make a fondue where, where like, uh, I'll, I'll get everything together, I'll, do, I'll, I'll follow the same preparation that I just did. And for some reason, I'm having a hard time getting these ingredients to come together. Not sure why. What I'll do is I'll just turn it up and I'll increase the heat so it starts to, you know, almost boil and I'll whisk it really fast and keep whisking it. And sometimes, usually it'll come right back together. So a little tip if you're struggling to keep this uh, keep this fondue from separating. Just a ribeye, simple. Okay, cool, man. Thanks for the uh, the suggestion. I'll give it a try. Appreciate that. Okay, so we got Kirsch. Consistency looks actually it looks pretty good. So the Kirsch thinned it out a little bit, and then I'm going to add a little bit of nutmeg. If you have a whole like whole nutmeg and you grate it in there, that'd be better. The only thing I have right now is, is already ground, so um, I'm using like, I don't know, like a quarter, here, a quarter teaspoon maybe, something like that. Just gonna whisk that in. Whisk it, stir it in. Okay. And we're ready for a taste test. So, almost done with the video, so if you got questions, fire away now. 
because <laughs> as soon as this is ready, I'm gonna go eat. Let's see here. Roman, what's up, man? How are you? Thanks for joining the live stream. There you go. Taste test. Taste test. Yeah. Mmm. <laughs> man. It's hard to beat a good fondue. It really is. It's so simple. Cheese and bread. You know? And then, you know, other things if you want to add it. But break it down to its simple ingredients. Got your cheese, got your wine, got your bread. Let me add a little bit more wine. It's getting a little thicker. There. All right. Give this a stir. Oop. I'm back. I'm back. Sorry. Looks like my GoPro died. <clears throat> there we go. That's perfect. Right there. Okay. So. We got fondue. That in there. We've got apples, broccoli, and yeah, that all fits in the frame, right? And bread. This is really this is a good spread. This is this is all you need. <laughs> so it's time to go enjoy this, and uh, I'll hang on for another minute or so. If you guys got any questions. Want to just jump in the chat real quick? Steve, great talking to you, man. Um, I'll see you soon. Would love to do some sort of collaboration together. I don't know how that would work. Uh, I don't know if you're on the East Coast, if we can get together at some point, or you just want to do something, uh, if you want to do something, you know, do it remotely. But uh, that'd be a lot of fun. Let me, uh, let me know if you're interested. Let's see. 2 a.m. in Journey, watching some cooking. Right on, dude. Yeah, well... I guess you could be doing, uh, you, uh, you could, you could be getting into some trouble. So I'm glad you're, uh, you're watching the video <laughs> instead of out, uh, you know, living it up, I guess. I don't know. Oh, man. Awesome. Oh, Atlanta. Cool. East coast. Right on. So we're close. I'm, I'm Richmond, Virginia. So we're, um, we're within driving distance, actually. That's pretty cool. Long drive, but still, can do it. All right, guys, well, one more bite here. Oh, look at that. Mm. Awesome. Well, thanks for watching, y'all. I appreciate it. You can always drop me uh, questions in the comments below this. I'll keep the live stream copy up. You can always refer to it. There's also a fondue video that I did a long time ago. So that has all of these steps and the ingredients and all that stuff included. So always reference that if you need to. Hope to see you guys again soon. I'm going to try to make this a weekly thing. So um, keep an eye out for more live streams coming soon. Catch you later. Have a good one, guys.